Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Q&A show. My name is Bob Terrio, and I will be your host for tonight's show. I am very excited to have you here because I know that you could be anywhere in the world, and you've chose to spend your time tonight on the Q&A show. Uh, before I get started, I just want to remind everyone, if you guys are watching this live, hashtag live. If you happen to catch this, this show uh, in replay down the road, go ahead and hashtag replay so we know that you watched it. That helps us out a lot. Um, also, if you wouldn't mind, but share this stream. I'd like to share this stream. I have somebody that's from El Paso. I want to get the word out that he's on the show. The more people that share this out, the more people that will get to see it. Hit that like button. I swear it's not going to electrocute your finger. Just hit that like button. Smash that heart button. Let's get some engagement going. Uh, if you have a question, please feel free to ask in comments. At the end of the, of, towards the end of the show, I'll try to bring some comments if we have time. Uh, but uh, go ahead and do that for me, please. I'd also like to thank our sponsor for tonight's show, which is Innovair Air Conditioning here in El Paso. And you guys, today it was what, 93 degrees, and it's only going to get hotter. Uh, if you want to convert your old swamp cooler, you just need an upgrade. Call Innovair Air Conditioning at 352. 3916. That's 352 391 uh, 3916. Tell them that you saw them on the QA show. Uh, you can also go to their website at keepcool915.com. So let me talk a little bit about my next guest. Um, like I said, he is an El Pasoan. He's actually the second El Pasoan to throw his hat into the ring to run for the uh, president of the United States in 2020. Uh, and he was a successful chiropractor here in El Paso, and he's now trying to live out his lifelong dream of running for president. Uh, let me introduce you to Mr. Benjamin uh, Leva, everyone, Benjamin Leva. Hey, hey Bob, thank, you. thank you very much for having me on the show. I'm honored to be here. Oh, thank you. Th thanks for coming on. So uh, president, people running for president, you have Beto O'Rourke now, and we have uh, Benjamin Leva. So I'm sure there's a lot of contrast between the two of you, because if I'm not mistaken, you're running as an independent, correct? Yes. So I'm running as an independent and Beto is running as a Democrat. And so why did you choose to run as an independent? How did that tell me? Let's, let's, let's go back a little bit. Tell everybody uh, your background story. You, I know you're from El Paso. Um, you had a successful chiropractic clinic here in El Paso. So why don't you start there? Okay. So, well, um, my name is Ben and I'm running for Ben Leva for the 2020 presidential elections. I come from humble beginnings. You know, I come from very young parents. My mom had me when she was the age of 16 years old. And, you know, I came to, uh, I started, when I started first grade, I was eight years old and I didn't speak English, you know, so I had a lot of trouble with school, but um, I was able to go through the public school system. And eventually I got my doctorate. Um, you know, when I was growing up, I did a lot of uh, side work. So I would do handyman work for the neighbors. Um, you know, I would clean up yards. I did a lot of landscaping. You know, I learned it uh, from some of my relatives. I would install irrigation systems. So, you know, throughout my childhood, I had, I had a lot of adult responsibilities. And it was good because I got to get leadership experience. So since the age of 12, um, I joined football. And football was awesome because it completely changed my life. Uh, you know, I got confidence for the first time, but um, I had a little bit of leadership already built in me. So every coach that I've ever had has always put me in the position of being a captain. So uh, my experience in leadership comes a lot from sports and teamwork. And, you know, because I come from, you know, young parents, a lot of the mentors in my life, I'm really grateful to have. They've been my teachers, my coaches, community leaders. People have taken a lot of the time you know, a lot of extra time to coach me and guide me. And I'm just really grateful, you know, for for the life that I've been able to achieve, especially being an American. I think in this country, I had the opportunity to become a doctor. You know, I, I was able to get loans to go to school. I was able to work. And, you know, um, I'm at a point in my life where, you know, since I was eight years old, having a, a difficult life, you know, you think, well, who's going to help us? You know, and I came to a realization when I was really young that, you know, no help was coming. So I had to really, you know, get to work to help my family and to, you know, to be a provider in a lot of ways. So, uh, you know, a little bit about me. Um, I learned a lot of marketing and sales, a lot about the community. Um, when I was 12 years old, I would actually charge people for their landscaping. You know, I'm talking thousands of dollars. So you could imagine a little 12 year old, uh, 
you know, I was a translator most of the time. So, uh, you know, here I am with my little notepad and, you know, little the receipts and things like that. So by the time so that I graduated, so you were like selling for landscapers. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, with the yeah because I was, you know, they, you know, um, I was a good student. So they always told me, OK, here's how you're going to present the sales pitch and here's what you're going to tell them. And my English was, you know, uh, really it was good, you know, at the time. So um, I would go to the adults and I would actually charge them and I had to, you know, present myself in a very serious way. And after a while, well, I got used to talking to people about money and business, sales, marketing. And I realized that all I had to do is just provide the best service to the people, you know, and understand their needs. And I really enjoy working with people. So becoming a doctor came really natural. You know, people, you know, I saw people with severe headaches, migraines, back pain, neck pain. And it was a challenge because, you know, people have all kinds of experiences, but you know, it was a challenge not only helping them with their health condition, but also with their the cost of care and health insurance. And um, I was able to provide programs that I I was I never turned anyone away because of lack of money because I know how that feels. So I'm just a person that's made it through the public education system. Uh, I'm a doctor. Uh, I made it. You know, I did well in business. And now that I'm at the proper age, you know, I'm 34. In August, I'll be 35. So next year, I can run for for president. You know, uh, my entire life, I thought that I wanted to take this position because I wanted to help people like me. So that's the reason so, that I ran. So Ben, are you an MD or you, you have a doctorate? Yeah, so I have a doctorate. I'm a doctor of chiropractic. Okay. Uh, an MD would be oh. a, a doctor of medicine. So we are what's called a physical medicine. So a doctor of chiropractic doesn't prescribe medications. Right. And so how did it come about that you, because you, you grew your practice fairly quickly, didn't you? I, I noticed that you had a lot of billboards and it was a very popular clinic at one time. And I know yeah. it's still existing. So did you actually sell the practice to run for president? That That's something else I had heard. Is that true? Yes, that's true. So, um, you know, I want to dedicate my entire life to public service. And so I really needed the, the time and, you know, the time, energy and the funds to get the campaign started. And, you know, I believe in, in my mission so much that I decided to, you know, sell my practice so that I can dedicate all of my time to the campaign. And so what is the, what was the turning point? I, I know that I had, I said at the beginning that this was your lifelong dream to run for president. So is it your lifelong dream to run for president, to actually become president? Because I mean, yeah. you, as you can see, this is a really hard endeavor you have taken on running for president, right? You were telling yeah. me that this is, this is a it's, lot. It's extremely difficult. I didn't think that I would get so much attention so fast, but 24 hours after being announced on the federal elections commission website, um, you know, they put me on, I came out on KTSM, News Channel 9, uh, El Diario, uh, Telemundo. And ever since, you know, I became an official candidate, a lot of uh, news stations, and I've been getting a lot of uh, attention. I thought my campaign would progress a little slower, but hey, it's okay. You know, I, I'm okay with the attention that we're getting. And right now we're putting our, our team together and establishing our campaign for the next year and a half. So what is your campaign or what is the platform? What is it that you stand for? So again, what, what sets you apart from everybody else that's run for independent, right? Do you, I mean, you really think you can make a dent in this? You've had the Ross Perot's and the Ron Paul's run, right? They were independents. What, what makes you different this time as an independent running where you think you could actually make a dent? Well, see, a lot of times people have told me things that I want to do aren't, um, aren't accomplishable. For example, being a chiropractor, opening my own office, becoming a doctor. I've always been told that my dreams are not possible, but I was raised with a mother and a family that always believed in me. So, you know, I, I think my only goal is to present myself in a way to show people, you know, the options that I'm presenting, which what sets me apart, I think more than anything are my ideas. And the reason I'm running for independent is because I see a lot of Republicans and Democrats really going at it at, you know, they're, like they fight with each other a lot. And I think I think if we just took the time to listen to each other and to talk, I think a lot can get done. So what, in a nutshell, what qualifies you to be president? You mentioned earlier that you thought age was an inhibitor or it was a barricade you thought, right? Age, you get that kickback a lot. So yeah. let's do away with age. So what qualifies Ben Leva to be president of the United States? Well, one, I'm a first generation American. I'm a first generation high school graduate, first generation college graduate. Um, 
I'm a first generation business owner. I, and I was able to go through the public education system through grants. I don't come from a wealthy family. So, you know, that, that should show that I was able to, you know, have some resilience, especially when it came to business. When I first came out, no bank would loan me money and it was very difficult, but I was able to grow my practice very fast. So going through the public education system, um, becoming a doctor really opened my mind and my heart to seeing the struggles of people, you know, especially our educators and our active military. It's unbelievable. I, I, I really have, um, it was really hard for me to see teachers, how stressed they are, how hard they work, how much they take on, not only in their classrooms, but externally. They're worried, they have anxiety, and they, they're worried about violence in the schools. The kids are stressed out. On top of that, the teachers, they try to use their health care insurance. It doesn't work, you know? So I, I really think that our active military and our educators, they shouldn't be paying for health care services because of the amount of stress that they go through, you know? So being a doctor, I got to deal with a variety of professions, people from all over the country. And it really opened my heart and my mind to their struggles. And having gone through the education system and becoming a doctor, having been in business and making it to the top, I know I'm young, but I think that the ideas that I have, they're strong. And, you know, if people follow me on my page, they're going to see that they're not just words. I have actual, uh, I mean, I, I have the whole plan out on how we're going to improve healthcare, how we're going to make it accessible to people, how we're going to have more, uh, more college accessibility to to over 160 million Americans because right now the world's changing re really fast. You know, I have friends that work uh, and their job is to merge companies in wall street when they, when they do big acquisitions. So a lot of the jobs right now are getting autom uh, automated, you know, so I think we should focus a lot on our e education system, you know, our budget reforms. I think a lot of things need upgrading. And I think that a big problem is a lot of the red tape and politics. So I think the difference is that, you know, I have passion for what I want to do and it's back through, you know, I'm a product of the system and I'm grateful for this country and for everything that it's had, that it, for all the opportunities that it's given me and for the life that I've, you know, been able to acquire. And so I think that's what sets me apart is that I don't come from a lot of money and I'm just a regular person trying to make a difference. So, so Ben, like you were mentioning that like doctors or uh, military shouldn't pay for health care and you have these ideas, though. Have you gone deep, I'm sorry, teacher, have you gone deeper on how you would get that done? Like, how would you make that happen? Do you have a plan yeah. for that with taxes? Yeah, Can you get into yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. So um, a large amount of the population makes under forty thousand dollars a year. And let's take, for example, a single mother that makes under the under forty thousand dollars a year. She currently pays uh, about 12% in taxes. So what I'm proposing is this, um, a government-backed uh, plan where we have a plan A, B, C, and D. So for example, plan A, single mother needs help with um, education, housing, health care, and child care. I propose that if she wants to opt into a program so that she can afford to go to school and not worry about her child care, she can pay more in taxes. That way it doesn't come out of pocket. So if we were to increase the amount of taxes that she pays, she would have all of those other benefits and still have money to uh, do things that, you know, that she needs. Um, but let's say somebody doesn't have kids, but they want to uh, go to uh, college and they need help with healthcare, then they can pay. Also, they can opt in to that program. Or if somebody just wants healthcare, then that would be part C. So if everybody were to opt into this program under $40,000 a year, it would add over $1.5 trillion to the budget. Um, that's one thing too, is I think that the, the cost of healthcare is really inflated right now. You know, being a doctor, I know what the cash price is for a lot of the procedures and I know how much, you know, uh, doctors actually would take to see a patient. Another problem is the provider. A lot of the times doctors are spending so much time with verifying insurance, documenting. I mean, they're so focused on paperwork that a lot of, a lot of the important time that they should be focused on patients, you know, isn't there for them. And then they have to wait months to get paid and then they have to deal with rejections from multiple insurances. So this government backed healthcare plan that I'm proposing, I propose that one um, for the provider's benefit that it pays within 24 to 48 hours. 
and that a list of all the services covered is um, ha that they have access to it, both patient and doctor, so that the insurance can be verified over seconds online. So that's just one for the healthcare reform. And I'm gonna put the entire platform on my website or on Facebook, uh, Ben Leva 2020. So you'll have that up in writing so people can go to it and check it out? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so how do you feel our current president right now is doing? What the job that he's doing, President Trump? You know, um, I think I have a lot of respect for President Trump. Um, you know, I, I know it's a difficult, uh, a difficult job, but he's he's done a lot. You know, for for his community, he's he's reached levels of business that are extremely that are high, and I, I think with the knowledge that he has and his experience, he's doing what he can with what he has. Um, I have a little bit of a different idea. For example, the wall, you know, there are places that do need a fence because people are just coming over and, you know, it's dangerous. But I don't think the entire border needs um, a fence. I think that a lot of money is being wasted in areas where we could do better things. For example, um, I, I saw on the news that Las Cruces, you know, they had a lot of immigrants just show up. And so then they had to pay out of pocket for the transportation, for the processing, for housing, for food. And right now there's a lot of um, people that are being held in places that there's a cap the capacities for 25 people, but there's over 50 people, you know, in each, in each location. So I think the resources would be better spent if we were to give the money to the cities directly, the cities dealing with the uh, arrival of immigration so that they can do things like hire doctors, nurses, you know, people that travel long distances, they can acquire disease that can be spread. That's a public safety problem. I think that's something that needs to be addressed. Processing people, I think um, we need to be talking to the places, talking to the cities and governments from where these people are coming from so that we can have two governments working together to see how we can resolve this immigration problem. So that's, so that's one thing um, that I, I think is different. Another thing too is my experience in healthcare as a provider, you know, dealing with the insurance companies, dealing with patients, knowing how, how things really work. I think my ideas would be different. So, so there is some differences you have with Trump, but you do agree with him on a lot of the, of the stances that he took, especially on the border issue. Well, I can see why somebody would think that, a you know, I mean, there's so many people crossing every day and you don't know who the people are. So I can see why he thinks a fence would help. But being from the border, we all know that the fence, you know, it really isn't doing much to stop the problem of people wanting to, to leave their home for other reasons. I think we need to, um, you know, diagnose the reason why people are leaving and then get to the root cause. Yeah, definitely. So, Ben, as I was going through, um, I see a lot of comments coming up on the screen. We can address some of those if you like or ask questions. But I'll just ask you, I see a lot of negative comments and accusations about you on social media, especially uh, FitFam. Um, is there anything that you want to respond or clear up here? Is there This is your opportunity right now, like we were saying earlier. Is there anything that people are seeing out there that's true, not true, exaggerated, not exaggerated? Well, you know, sometimes um, I'm online and I'm reading some stories about myself and I want to get the bag of popcorn. I'm wondering, what is it that I did? You know, um, I don't, I don't, uh, some of the things, you know, I don't really know how to respond to, to some of the things like there, I think, you know, every time that I've tried to do something, you know, there's always going to be negative people that are going to tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that. But I've never really been one to pay much attention to the negativity. You know, if I were to listen to the people that told me I couldn't do anything, then I would have never played football. I would have never gone to college. You know, I would have never opened my practice. I would have, I wouldn't have ever done anything. So, you know, I just don't pay attention to to naysayers. So let me ask you a question. Like Beto O'Rourke, he has his campaign quarters here in El Paso. How come, as a hometown or a homegrown, you know, product of El Paso, you didn't put your headquarters here in El Paso? You know, because my daughter, um, she lives most of the time in another country and she has more access to the uh, international airport in Dallas and she also has homes there. So I've been spending a lot of time in Dallas, hoping to spend more time with my daughter because one of the values of my campaign is for families to be united. And, you know, if I'm gonna, you know, I just wanted to spend more time with my daughter. But, um, 
No, I will be spending a lot of time in El Paso. I love El Paso. If it wasn't for El Paso, I wouldn't have the opportunity, you know, to have achieved anything that I did. And I mean, I wish I could be here 100% of the time, but because of my family and my access to seeing my daughter, that's the reason. So what are your immediate uh, goals for the campaign? I mean, so you're in Dallas, right? What are you going to do about fundraising? How are you going to get the word out there? How big is your campaign? Well, one of the things about the, the headquarters is uh, my team and I were putting together our, our campaign and the cities that we're going to be traveling to. So it kind of seems like I will no longer have headquarters, but we're going to be traveling the entire country as much as possible. Um, some of the immediate things that I want to do is put together my... Um, you know, my talks for teachers, for military, for people of the community. So I can talk about my health care reforms, about public safety, about immigration and the things that affect them. So we're going to be doing talks all over the country and I'll be doing talks in El Paso in the next couple of weeks. So definitely uh, I'll, I'll invite you, Bob, if you'd like to come to one of those, I think it'd be great. Do you have plans on doing the town hall type of meetings where the public can show up? Oh, yeah, I would lo absolutely love to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it so, seems like there would be a lot of people that want to ask you questions. I would love that, yes. Okay. Uh, so town hall meetings, you're going to do, you're going to put all of your uh, platform up online. We know that for sure, right? Yes. You'll be coming to El Paso. You're here now, but you'll be coming in a public forum to address the people of El Paso, right? Yes. Yeah. And let's see, right now, I do have some questions. You want to take some questions from sure. the audience? Sure. Let's here, let's see what we've got. Uh, I want to see here. If I could pull them up. So we have one here from uh, Louis Manuel. What do you think about the current president? Should he be impeached? Should he be impeached? Mm -hmm. What I think, so for the first question is what I think about him. Yep. Um, I think he's not um, a politician. I think he's a businessman. And, you know, I think um, I think he's under a lot of stress. And should he be impeached um, for what? Why? Why is it that he's asking if he should be impeached? Uh, I think. No, I think. I mean, on, to be honest with you, uh, I think I should, you know, run for, for office and win it. Here's another, one, here's another one, Jules Chen. I worked the numbers on his health care plan, and it could increase the payout by a citizen for health care. What's that? Did you post the number? It says, I worked the numbers on his health care plan, and it would, incre it would increase the payout by a citizen for health care. What does that mean? It would increase the payout for a citizen? Um, I guess the taxes or health care would go up for a citizen. Payout? Did you post something about that? Did you put um, numbers about healthcare? No, I mean I've talked about it in my videos. Mm -hmm. I mean the average person pays ten thousand dollars out of pocket right now. Right, ten thousand average on the average. Yeah, the average. The number oh, one of the biggest reasons why people go bankrupt in the United States is because of healthcare. Well, here's a follow up asking him about confusing healthcare plans where he stated people making over four hundred and fifty k would have free healthcare. Yes. Uh, so one of the, I think that's a benefit that people who uh, pay so much in taxes, that population actually contributes over 30% to the entire um, tax budget. So the reason I think that would be fair is because we would also include active military and teachers into that healthcare plan. And I think there should be incentives for people that are providing so much to the economy to stay in the United States. Because right now in our global market, a lot of people are being offered positions and tax breaks all over the world. So I think that we should do something to help, you know, people who are the shakers and movers of society. You know, and I, the healthcare care costs for them, I think it, it'd be reasonable because of how much they contribute to taxes. Yeah, I was going through here. You need to go through uh, the comments, Ben. There's so many comments. I, I, I can't pull them up fast enough. There's a lot of people on here. Uh, asking a whole bunch of questions, um, just a ton. Um, they want to know why you're in Dallas. You kind of asked that because of your daughter. Um, so why did candidate uh, Leva leave El Paso? Why is he paying a lot of employees like Johnny Rodriguez and Jonathan Ferguson? 
I don't know what that is. Do you see that one? No, I can't see the comments on my page. Why did candidate Leva just left leave El Paso without paying a lot of employees like Johnny Rodriguez and Jonathan Ferguson? So um, I was an investor into a business and mm -hmm. those two uh, people were employees of that business. But as an investor, I had two other owners who managed that company and there's a CFO and an accountant. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Will you go on on here, Ben, and check this out when you get a chance and sure. you may want to respond because there's there's a lot of stuff on here. Um, I would want to respond to a lot of this. I just can't pull it all up. So let's get back to your campaign. So what are we going to do now? Uh, what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to have do you have a firm dates for town square or the, the, the town hall meetings you'll be having? Do you have any dates yet? No, Something currently like we're putting the, you know, our tour together for the country but I should be doing something in El Paso in the next couple of weeks or months. And a website, how, how is most of your fundraising going to be done? Are you going to ask for donations? Are you going to be putting on events? Yeah, I'm going to be doing events and asking for donations from the general public. And what's your website? If somebody wants to go and look you up, look up your platform. So it'll be up and running um, in the next week or so. It's Ben Leva 2020. But for now, people can look me up on Facebook at Ben Leva 2020 presidential candidate. Ben Leva, 2020 presidential candidate. Yes. All right, Ben, any final words, anything you want to say while you have the opportunity on here? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody that came on here. You know, I appreciate it. I'm so grateful. Um, I'm going to do my best to serve the community. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I did a good job. Well, thanks for coming on. And like I said, I, I would go back and, and, and check all this out. There's just so much comments and you may want to address them and talk to these people, but I appreciate you coming on the Q&A show uh, and keep us informed of what's going on in your platform. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. And El Paso, thank you so much for your support. Um, I love you. I'm grateful to all the community leaders and my teachers, my coaches, to everybody that's in El Paso. Thank you so much. Um, if it wasn't because my daughter spends a lot of time in Dallas, I would be here 24-7. So thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. All right. Thanks, Bob. And for everybody who joined the Q&A show tonight, I really appreciate it. Like I said, I know you could be anywhere in the world, uh, and I appreciate you coming on here. Uh, don't forget, if you're watching it right now, go ahead and hashtag replay so we know that you saw it. And I do want to do a shout out one more time to our corporate sponsor, Innovare Air Conditioning. Like I said, if you guys want to convert, right now is the time, 915-352-3916. And you can go to their website at keepcool915.com. Until the next Q&A show, thanks for joining me. I'm Bob Terrio, and I bid you a really great day. Bye-bye.